welcome if you're new here this is my favorite series this is that time where we just get to sit down hang out and unbox and review my fragrances of the week that i just got uh, so if you're new here hang out feel free to fall asleep uh, if you're trying to get some rest and the names of the fragrances are going to be in the uh, pinned comment as well as the description so anyways we have an exciting one today. Uh, not that they're not all exciting, <laughs> but we got a big boy today. We got this. Oh, it's heavy. It's heavy. And um, like normal or like usual, I don't remember what's in it, but I'm sure it's some good stuff. And this is from Perfume Spot. I never tried it before. Heard some mixed reviews on it, but thought I'd give it a go myself, so let's go ahead, dig in, and I'll show you what I got. <laughs> like usual, my uh, post office does a, a pretty good job of making sure that my box is in tatters uh, before it ever gets here. <laughs> Just, uh, I just reviewed the new release of this one in the last video. The intense, intense version. The Dark Card Noir classic. Got some Jovans. Jovan Musk. Jovan White Musk. these particular ones I'm not going to be sampling in this video because I have a whole nother video planned where we're going to sample the entire Cuba line so stay tuned for that um, depending when you're watching I might already be out oh Mancera red tobacco and last and possibly least what is this Latafa's I think this is the clone that they have of Y Men. So, had a really good price. So, I just decided to get it. So, let's get the box out of the way and start opening up and reviewing some fragrances. So, let's go ahead and jump into it. I've never, never heard of Halston 
it's first time, the first time that I ever heard of it. Uh, very cheap and very well reviewed. I think I've just been living under a rock this whole time because everyone <laughs> seems to know what Alston is. And this is their 112. 4.2 ounce. to assume I'd probably say it's musky it's it's probably manly but let's see just going off of literally nothing I, I know nothing about this I, one two oh second spray not bad not a bad sprayer oh my gosh yeah that's almost like a perfume like you could probably guess from the bottle and the overall design of it it's it's very 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 smoky very dark very textured very stylized very aromatic very deep this is a date night fragrance a couple sprays will do you this is like the 90s version of a date night cologne uh, the 90s wanted colognes that were very spicy, very aromatic, and very in your face, which is why you see even the f nice, excitable, friendly fragrances of the 90s and the 80s are really, really spicy. Right off the bat, I'm getting just a lot of floral. It's just, it's just lots and lots of floral. Uh, definitely getting some musk in there. It's not, it's not bad, you know, it's not bad. This is not the kind of fragrance that I'm usually attracted to. I'm usually attracted to either things that are sweet, things that utilize fruit. That's what this, I think, needs. A little bit of that fruit or a little bit of that vanilla. It almost has a leather undertone where I think vanilla would have suited it better. It's fine. It's fine. But would I say inoffensive? No. No, I would not say inoffensive. It's... It has an opinion. <laughs> it has an opinion, and you might not like it, but I definitely would not make this an everyday wear. Would not make it a, a daytime fragrance, and I think that's purely a nighttime fragrance. Um, and a date night, spicy, spicy day night fragrance that I think lends itself to being pretty unisex. So that's the good thing about it. And of course, to try to rank this from 0 to 10, and I would give that, i give it a 4. It's not bad, it's just not great either, I don't think. Alright, let's go ahead and review its brother. This is Z14. It's just very, very, you can see... Like very plain bottles. It's interesting. It's an interesting uh, marketing. But I do wonder when this came out because it just like it's just so much of like an 80s, 90s kind of, maybe even 70s. Honestly, there was the years of spice, and now. 
now we're kind of in the years of smoke and sweetness. I'm sure back in the day that was probably a very, very good fragrance. Good lord, this thing is huge. <laughs> I could make a joke there. So, we got, I will say, you know, this is like, has kind of a hand blown glass kind of thing, and the bottle's uneven. And I feel like it's because every bottle's a little bit different. And I actually really like that. I take it back. I really, I really do appreciate the bottle. But as you can see, literally the same. Um, obviously, you know, on the bottom, it's a little bit different. If you just like had this entire collection though on your shelf, how would you know which one you had that I don't really understand? Like, I really don't understand the marketing here. If someone could help me understand that. I don't understand why you'd make your, your bottles identical. At least change like a color or two, like uh, Valentino. You know, they uh, all have the same bottles, but you could differentiate them. Already smelling lots of spice, lots of aromatics. Let's spray. Beautiful atomizer. That was beautiful. See, now that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, yes, yes. Beautiful. So this thing totally kicks the other one's rear, in my opinion. This, you have the same level of spiciness, the same aromatics, but you have a cutting in of something that's sweet. You have either a fruit, or you have some sort of a nice floral arrangement that has a bit of sweetness to it, maybe a lily, maybe a violet. And then the undertones, you have something perfumey, it's just the sweetness. I still don't think it's like vanilla or anything, but it's not death, death, man, death, darkness, like the, like the other one is. This one, it's spicy, but it's friendly. It's like the old Calvin Klein uh, colognes. It's spicy, but friendly. This is, this is your masculine musky all day fragrance. Um, if you like something that's spicy and aromatic, you gotta love the spice. You gotta like the spice. You gotta love the woody, the woodsiness. As it settles becoming more and those uh, bass notes, and those bass notes are making it even sweeter, even sweeter, even sweeter. So that's a great, that's a great fragrance right there. And you might be asking, what is this size? This is an eight ounce, eight ounce. And the reason why I got the eight ounce is based on the fact that it was like $4 more than 3.4, I said. You kidding, why not? So. They, f they get me with that. 10 times out of 10, they get me with that. You can get a 1.7 for 20 or get a 3.4 for 32. I'm like, why wouldn't I want the bigger one for that price? <laughs> they get me hook, line, and sinker. So the 1 to 12, I'd be interested to come back on. But the Z14, is that what that was? Z14? Z14 was was really good, uh, and I would give it a solid uh, between seven and eight. So I'll give it like I'll give it an eight. I'll, I'll err on the side of aggression. So everything that I got tonight is kind of more of a musky, more manly power. Er, your testosterone is gonna shoot up <laughs> after watching this video. All right. That I got her in the water. I don't know why. I can't say this fragrance without doing a Russian like accent. I don't. I don't, I don't know why. I'm pretty sure it's French.
you might be asking yourself, why would you get a big old bottle of Drakkar? You're probably never gonna wear that. And you're absolutely correct. <laughs> this is a bottle that I'm getting for a future video, as well as Drakkar was one of those Aqua de Geos, just so, so popular in the 90s, 80s, 90s, even thousands, early thousands. It's a testament to modern fragrance, and I have to have it in my collection. And actually, they just released this, the Dakar Noir, intense. Um, so, also, might need to pick that up, but got this because everybody, every fragrance collector has to have Dakar in their collection, in my opinion. So, we're continuing on with all of our our 90s fragrances. Nah. I know full well what your car smells like. This is the only one that I know what it smells like. Look at that. That is a big old bottle. Holy cow. It's... It's so identifiable, like... You see this on a shelf, you just know. You just know. If you know, you know. But, but back in the day, this actually used to be expensive. And expensive enough to where they had clones. of this bad boy. So. Oh, what's the size of this one? It's big. This is a 6.7 ounce. And you want to talk about spicy and aromatic. Let's go. Just true class. This guy, true class. Oh man, that's good. A true musky, fresh, soapy scent. Fresh, 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 fresh. Woodsy. Maybe a little bit of fruit on that top note. Dissipates quick. Not too heavy. Not too light. Definitely not too light. Ah, oh, just gorgeous. It smells like you're. It smells like your your favorite um, shower gel. You know, performs good, projects good. It's just a good fragrance. There's not much I can say about, other than that about Dracar. Dracar Noir. Definitely a all day fragrance. It was the Axe body spray before Axe even knew that it was Axe. deserves its it's it's earned its place and it deserves it uh, let's give it an 8 out of 10 it would be pure disrespect to not give a car at least that so let's keep going on with our musk shall we musky Joval. this is Joval musk I don't know either. This is a three ounce. I know that it's a beautiful amber color. That's says good things for me. I absolutely love that. me. <laughs> the 
this is like just super super cheap so let's try it three ounce one two oh that was like dead eye dead shot It's not too strong, actually. It delivers what it promises. It, it promised musk, and it gives you musk. It's just like pure musk. Musky. You know, musk is a animal derivative, and it's illegal now to use it in fragrances. So they use a synthetic musk. And actually, there's two things that are interesting about that one is that musk, while it has an interesting fragrance, it also is very similar to like suede and leather. So I think a lot of people that don't like those things are not gonna like musk. And then the second one is that the um, synthetic compound that they use to make musk is actually a neurotoxin. So some people have issues when they get too close. And, and smell too much of it. So, uh, there's not much to say about that, really. It's it's musky. Would I wear it on my own? Like, just nothing but musk? No, no. That's definitely a, a layer fragrance. That's, that's a fragrance that you already have a, a pretty good fragrance, and you want to just kick it up a little bit by layering it with another fragrance, a little musky undertones, then you grab that. That's nobody should wear that just on its own. So I'm interested to see this. Then this is white musk, and again, these are eight or nine dollar fragrances. So these are not big ticket items. Same bottle. This one's just a little bit lighter. This is a This is a hundred thousand times better. This has a super, super sweet note right at the top. There's something more to this than just flat out musk. It's got a super sweet note, some sort of berry or some sort of, I don't think citrus, but it might, might be citrus. It's hard to tell. It's, it's very blended together that you can't really differentiate or, or pick out any individual notes. It doesn't evolve. It's pretty much that. Um, the sweetness goes away a little bit, and then you get a little bit more musk that comes in uh, to the surface. That is a thousand times better than just musk. It's musk, but this is actually like a full-fledged cologne. It's an actual fragrance, whereas the other one is just a straight-up musk, and nobody nobody wants to wear straight up musk are you kidding me so musk gets a 3 out of 10 because you can layer it and then I'm going to give white musk I'll give it a 5 so it was better than I expected but I still wouldn't drop everything and run to it okay so I want to get this one out of the way and then we're gonna try the top three that I'm really excited about, like legitimately excited about. This guy. Fuck otter. Fuck otter. This is by our friends at Watafa.
little boxes. Big old boxes. But I love Latofa's packaging. So if it means I have to fight with it a little bit longer. This is Fakar Latafa. So you see, it's reflective. Really, really cool. And oh, it's got one of those um, engagement ring, will you marry me style. And the cap apparently has decided to come off. It was so excited to get sprayed, um, decided to remove itself. Alright. Um, this is the Nothing too fancy, but they do use a suede insert. Obviously not real suede, but um, polyester, probably. And it's pretty cool. I have gotten really good at not feeling guilty when I throw out my fragrance boxes um, because I just want to hoard them all and I can't and I tell myself that every time you can't there is no box that is harder to throw out than Latafa's and out there remains the boxes and the packaging are gorgeous alright Fakar Kind of like um, fish scales. I don't know if you can see that too well, but this is your clone of Y by Yves Saint Laurent. I like Y, uh, but it's not really that expensive. I don't know if a clone was really needed, but like 18 bucks for this versus Y, which is 80, 90, and that's at a discount. Let's just spray it and see. Okay, beautiful atomizer. Really? This is, this is why. This is, wow. It's a little bit fruitier, but I actually like it like that. So, East Saint Laurent's Y, you got Y Men, you got Y Men Eau de Parfum, then you have Y Men Parfum, then you have my favorite, which is Y Men Eau de Parfum Intense, and then I guess they just came out with an elixir, if I'm not mistaken. I could be mistaken, but I, I think they did. So, there's a lot of different variations, what I'm saying. This smells like the parfum to me. But it's fruitier, it's sweeter. It's a little sweeter than Y Men. Y Men, especially the intense and the Eau de Parfum, has kind of a smoky, bitter kind of base note um, where this kind of stays sweet. This kind of reminds me a little bit more of like the most wanted or something like that, something that stays quaintly sweet throughout. It is developing a little bit though, it's getting a little bit deeper. That's incredible. That's incredible. If I smelled this, I, I would think it's why men. I'm gonna have to do a side to side comparison because I might I might like this better than why men. It's that that sweetness that it has. It's got a crazy fruit note uh, concentration that does not quit. That's a nine out of ten all day. That's a baller. I didn't want to get this one because. I have the Y men's, so I'm like, it's not, they're not that expensive, and I already have them, so why would I get a clone, and then I don't wear them either, um, at least they're not, they're not part of my rotation, you know, so, uh, I'm glad I did, I think I like that better, never thought I'd say that, <laughs> never thought I'd say that, 9 out of 10, banger, all day, I think that's 
it's most most like the Porta Fondo, which is great. Okay, Zeno by Davinoff. I got this fragrance for a video as well. Very excited about trying this. Probably like one of the, I don't know, maybe I'm alone on this, the ugliest colors, like that yellow cream, kind of like 1960s, 1970s Miami. Like, I don't know, I don't, I think it's hideous, but it goes well with the black. spicy it's like leathery right at the top note perfume 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 but also depth aromatic spicy it's not playful it's fiery it's confident it's sexy it's date night some sort of underlying floral in there i'm not getting a whole lot of sweetness i'm just smelling flowers now I'm getting a little bit of like a vanilla at the end, like a little compliment. That's phenomenal. That's that's really fantastic. This is the 90s in a bottle. <laughs> this is definitely the 90s in a bottle. That's really, really good. Wow. It, it's so weird because on one side, I want to say it's feminine because you have a lot of flowers. You have a lot of, you know, maybe a little bit of vanilla there at the end. It's aromatic. It's a little spicy. And it mellows out really well. So I want to say that it's feminine, but it also has such a, a heavy undertone. But I get fooled all the time. Like, Paco Rabanne has a new fragrance out called Fame. And I love it. And it's super deep. And it's super um, complex. And it's dark. It's so dark and musky, and mm, and it's it's a perfume. So I think sometimes perfumes are muskier and darker than than other things. So man, that's that's a baller right there. I like it as it evolves. It's getting more and more woodsy. It's not over the top flower, floral anymore. It's getting a little woodsy. Um, 8 out of 10. It's not as good as uh, Fakar, uh, but it's good. It's really good. I give it a thumbs up. I'm not a huge fan of, of Davidoff um, because the only fragrance that I really know is Cool Water, and I don't really like Cool Water, so I'm glad to encounter something that I like. 8 out of 10. Okay. Halloween Man X X. X, 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 X. <laughs> no. I tried Halloween Man. And I tried that in my video a couple weeks ago. And the reason why I have this right now is because 
I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. In fact, I've been rocking it lately. So I said, I gotta go get me the other one. And I think they only have two. I think it's just Halloween Man, Halloween Man X. I think that's it. But if they have more, I'm gonna be getting it. So, Halloween Man was a very, very similar to, um, in my opinion, to um, Valentino, Born in Roma Intense. And I've been told that Valentino's Born in Roma Intense is very similar to a another Paco Rabanne fragrance. So I think you have the same DNA coursing through all of their veins. The best part about that, though, is the fact that the Halloween is very affordable. It's 20-something dollars on the high end, 30, mid 30 on the high end. And then you have Born in Roma Intense, that's $160. And so I was super happy to see, and that's why I've been wearing that fragrance instead of Born in Roma Intense. Save me some time and money. So, X, explore your limits, is what it says. And this is the Oretone. And apparently this is made in Spain, España. Interesting. So, let's open it up. I'm excited. There's a couple of different... A couple of different... Uh, oh gosh, sorry. <laughs> There's a couple of different... Designers that I have on the table tonight. That could lead the way to being my new favorite fragrance designer and this is one of them the other one is Mancera which we have next let's see what it's inside interesting so we have a similar bottle it's a simple bottle with a plastic top that says Halloween man there's no difference. Doesn't say X on here. So let's see. I had no idea what to expect with the very first Halloween fragrance that I had, and <laughs> I was so happily surprised when I tried it. I thought it was great. I had no idea what it was going to be like. This, I feel like I. I've already set up for disappointment because I loved the first one so much, but you know, let's just let's just see, let's just see, let's just see. Halloween Man X. One, two, three. Man, I want that fragrance that makes me speechless. I only got two more, two more chances here. Oh. doesn't really smell that much different than the first one. What's the difference between this one and the other one? This is X, right? Yeah, it's X. Halloween Man X. Right off the bat, like super fruity notes in your face. Think Paco Rabanne, one million. Think. Um, I don't want to say Invictus because Invictus is more playful and it's a blues fragrance. But I think like super fruity, playful notes right off the top. Yeah, lots of fruit, lots of a uh, little bit of floral, very playful, like a clubbing fragrance. Think like a clubbing fragrance, but no citrus, you know. So when you're talking about non discriminant fruit, non whatever fruit, you know, where they just say red fruits and, and it's not like one specific fruit, there's no citrus in there so it's just like sweet just comes off as sweet as it sits it's just getting sweeter it almost um, lends itself to being like a hybrid between born and roll intense or um one million and herbapura it's kind of what it reminds me of like a hybrid of those two because it has those fruits this is a very one-dimensional fragrance. There's not, it's not D 
deep. There's no depth to this fragrance. It's just, it's fruit, 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 fruit
which I heard is eh. And then um, the, was that the other vanilla, black vanilla? And then uh, C Job Boy Zay. And I said, hold up, let him wait until you try red tobacco because I already ordered it. And I wanted to see if Vancera was, was a banger because if they did good with one, it leads me to believe that the other ones would be good, at least in performance and siage and longevity and all that stuff. So look at that. Of course, these things are expensive. Mancera's are $150, you know, just like your, that's so cool. Just like your, uh, you know, top end designer fragrances. And uh, Nishane, I, I still haven't gotten Nishane, and that's even more expensive. Um, so we have them. What a bubble. Made in France. Okay. Let's explore this, because this is really, really cool to me. There's a gold bag. There's a bag. It makes really good noises. something that's going to be front and center on the shelf. It is gorgeous. Look at this. It's so gorgeous. It's, it's beautiful. So, oh, you have a, a magnetized cap. If you've been with me for any period of time, you know I'm a sucker for that. I don't know why, but I am. You got like a flower on there, on the cap. So this is not the intense version. This is just the regular version. Um, the intense version is still like twice as much as the original. So I just went with the original. And from what I hear, it's a very in your face fragrance to begin with. So I don't know if I want the intense version. So I've never been like, a, I consider myself a huge tobacco uh, fragrance fan, but recently tried tobacco vanille by Tom Ford and loved it like loved it so I'm thinking maybe maybe I am a tobacco guy and I just I didn't know so enough talking let's just do this thing red tobacco one oh that atomizer's gorgeous 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 You're getting a lot of tobacco, but you're also getting cut with a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sweetness that balances out perfectly. It's sweet. With the tobacco, it's a little earthy. Oh my gosh. The 
that's incredible. As it dries down, you get more tobacco. I've always equated, for some reason, tobacco to like a chocolate, like kind of um, earthy sweetness, kind of like a cocoa powder, which is kind of what I'm getting, but... Oh my gosh, what a gorgeous fragrance. What a gorgeous fragrance. When do you wear this? When do you wear this? That's a tough one. I don't know. It's, see this is, what it kind of reminds me of is uh, black opium over red. It's black opium, which is deep, complex, fall, winter kind of stuff for me anyways. Uh, but then when you put in the cherry with the red, it becomes multifaceted. It's complete opposites, right? And so now you might be able to get away with wearing it in the spring. I feel the same way about this one. It's on first look, it's winter, it's fall, it's it's something like that. But then there's that fruity note in there. That red. And to me it's it's a cherry, strawberry kind of fruity smell to me. That just cuts into that tobacco perfectly. Oh my gosh. I would like to see maybe a little bit of vanilla as a base note on this. See, I could, I could just, and this is the benefit of layering. If you can layer stuff, figure out what works, then layer. Um, create different projections, different styles. I'd love to see something, something creamy in there at the end. I'd like to see something come in and bring it together. Man, that's good. So, I'll try it. I don't know about summer, but spring, definitely the colder days of spring and fall 100%. Could do that in fall and winter. Um, I don't know, man. I've never given a 10 out of 10 fragrance and that's pretty dang close. Man, but that tobacco is so strong too, but it's, it's not, it's good. Like it, it really works, but I will say that it's probably more of a divisive scent. Cause some people really don't like the smell of tobacco. So I can see where that, so let's look at this. Let's look at Fakar and let's look at red tobacco. I'll give red tobacco a nine. Let's see which one wins between these two. It's getting, you get more tobacco as it goes. The fruit dies faster than the tobacco. Oh my gosh. And this is, this is the thing, this is a great example of the fact that the more expensive fragrance doesn't always win out for cars, $16. And Mancera is over 100. You know, it's a niche fragrance. Nah, I gotta give it to Fakar. I'm gonna give it to Fakar. Number one, the only reason, only reason, is because as Fakar dries, it gets better. But again, it's a clone, so it is a little unoriginal. But I think it's sweeter than Y, and I think it's better. Uh, it does it better that way. Uh, and... Some people wonder why can't clones be 100% and I ar would argue that it's intentional. Clones don't want to be 100% because if they're 100% then there's no difference between the two of them. They want to clone that fragrance but do something to it to make it better. And so you want to buy their fragrance over the original. Uh, so. The only reason why I give it to that is just as, as red tobacco dries, it gets more tobacco smelling. And I could just see where people wouldn't like it. I love it. I love tobacco. Uh, but I can see where it's divisive. And Fakar, you could wear this year round. Year round and year round. So one and two. And uh, what the hell? I'll, get, I'll give Halloween Man X. I did like it. It was just, I was just a little disappointed. Um, unless Zeno. Yeah, I'll give it to Halloween. So, Fakar, Red Tobacco, and Halloween. This was a fun one. Lots of musk, lots of deep fragrances, deep notes, complexity, dark, um, date, date notes. This has been fun.
I've enjoyed this thoroughly. Perfume Spot gets two thumbs up for me, as well as these fragrances. Um, gonna be trying out more Mancera for sure, and Latafa is just, Latafa is just awesome. Latafa can do no wrong, as far as I'm concerned. So, anyways, I hope you all have a good rest, good sleep, and I will see you on the next video.